Hey Bucket Pond family, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a deeper look at one of our bucket ponds. Yep, our namesake. Uh, so we're going to take some samples from that white bucket, and I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised about what's going on inside here. The point of this video is to show you that even a 5-gallon bucket can uh, contain a fully functional pond ecosystem. This bucket has been running for about two years now, and I have taken some samples using this jar. We're going to take a deeper look at what's going on inside here, and I'm going to show you that we have a fully developed ecosystem, a complete food chain uh, with biofiltration and tons, tons of life inside, a lot of biodiversity. It's really nice, and I was really uh, impressed by these samples. So first of all, we have some Nutella macroalgae. This is basically the filtration in the pond. I don't feed this pond. I don't add any fish food or anything like that in here. I don't maintain it. I don't clean it at all, uh, though I do occasionally pluck some plants out of here. So our first big uh, find in here were these giant water mites. I've never seen these guys anywhere else before. They are huge um, compared to our other water mites that we have in our aquariums. These guys are giant. They are larger than ostracods. Um, they are bright yellow. And of course, they have eight legs. They are arachnids, and they are related to ticks and spiders. Uh, but these particular water mites are really weird and, and really interesting. When I first saw them in these samples, I thought, like, wow, we have some new creature to culture. But I think that these guys would be a bit difficult to raise, like, in a small jar due to the way that their life cycle works. And uh, I believe that they came in uh, hitchhiking on dragonflies. Uh, though I could be wrong, they might have come in on some other animal. But these uh, water mites are just so big, it's crazy to me. I didn't expect to see anything this size. And uh, typically the water mites we've seen are much smaller. Uh, these guys are also very active. They swim around a lot, and uh, they're, they're always moving. They're always uh, kicking their legs around, and I think that they do that to uh, move water over their bodies. But uh, they're a very nice find. I'm really impressed to see them in here, and I would like to learn more about them in the future. There are thousands upon thousands of different water mite species, so I could not give you an ID on these guys. Uh, but still, they're really cool, and I love their coloration and the way they move. Now, in this bucket pond, we have our water mites. We have some leeches, some copepods, some other small creatures like paramecium and rotifers, I believe. Uh, but this bucket pond is very developed, and I'm very happy with it. But uh, yeah, here's one of our leeches now. And uh, it doesn't seem very interested in the water mites. I thought it might try to feed on them, but it, uh, it couldn't care less about the water mites themselves. So that shows that they are not a prey item. No, I've been wondering for quite a while uh, what my leeches were feeding on. As there are no fish in this bucket, there are no frogs in here. But there is an overabundance of insect larvae. Surprisingly, I did not see any mosquito larvae in here. Uh, but we do have these guys, which I believe are uh, some type of beetle. Though I could be wrong, but I believe they are a beetle larva of some kind. And uh, they're also very active. I like their little forelegs they have there. Ah, but here we are. Yes, we have a leech feeding on one of the insect larvae. Uh, I was very lucky to capture this on camera. And the leech is clearly attacking this poor creature. <laughs> um, there's no doubt about that. They are wrestling. And the leech is clearly winning. It's feeding on the fluid inside of the larva's body. And just like that, it's done. Now, see, the leech did not kill the prey, as uh, that would not be in its best interest. It can feed on the prey item. It can take some of the fluid. It can release it. And after that thing has, uh, after that insect larva has recuperated a bit, the leech can feed again. So we finally have an answer to what our leeches are eating. And uh, that was one of my theories. I believe that they were eating insect larvae, and uh, we were proven correct. Now, uh, from what I've seen online, these leeches would most likely feed on snails as well. Uh, but there are no snails in this bucket pond. And I will not add a snail into this sample as a, an experiment. I just can't do it. <laughs> I love my snails too much. I can't just throw one in there and see if it would you know, be attacked like that. It would break my heart. Uh, things like that will happen in nature, but there's no reason to kill one of my pet snails just to prove an idea. 
But still, we have a leech here, and uh, it's a very successful hunter, and I was very happy to get that clip on video. Uh, these leeches creeped me out a great deal at first, but uh, as we've come to understand them, uh, I've grown to enjoy them as well. And here we have some of the insect larvae. Uh, they seem to have created some kind of little safety net, some kind of little tunnel, and uh, kind of like a case worm. Uh, it's clearly burrowed into this little area, uh, kind of uh, looks like a fallen leaf, and uh, it looks like this insect larva is uh, taking shelter in here. Maybe it's protecting itself from the leeches, I can't say for sure. There aren't a, a huge number of leeches in this pond, but there are quite a few. This small sample here contained about three or four, about half a dozen uh, of the uh, larger water mites, and probably 12 or 14 of the insect larvae here. Uh, and these guys are very active as well. I believe that wiggling motion helps to move water over their bodies and to help them breathe. But I could be wrong. You know, it's hard to say. We're still learning about all of these little creatures inside. And you can see some of the Nutella there as well. It has a lot of branching and uh, different uh, patterns of its growth. So that's the sample there, guys. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. We have giant water mites. We have leeches. We have uh, uh, insect larvae. We have live macroalgae. Uh, there is freshwater macroalgae, a bit like seaweed, uh, though it grows a bit differently. You can see that the water samples here are very clear, and that's pretty impressive for a two-year-old bucket of water outside. Uh, but that's due to the biofiltration power of the Nutella macroalgae. The way that it grows and the branching and whirling, it's a bit like a green net, and it takes up a lot of small particles. And it also houses a lot of bacteria that help to process ammonia and nitrogen. So this wasn't a very long video, and I didn't build an aquarium in this one. I just wanted to show you that these five-gallon buckets can contain a complete ecosystem. Uh, there's a reason that I called the channel Bucket Ponds. And a lot of normal people, <laughs> when I tell them I have a channel, I tell them the name of the channel. They give me a weird look. They don't quite understand it, you know. But when I created the channel and named it Bucket Ponds, uh, there was no use of that name on the internet. The term bucket ponds, all one word, uh, was not used anywhere in the English-speaking internet. So I thought that would be a great place for, uh, you know, uh, search engine optimization and a great description of what I do here at the channel. Which is, of course, you know, I, I build many ponds. <laughs> and uh, that's the main focus. We build a lot of jar projects, some larger aquariums as well. Uh, but typically, we focus on these outdoor nanoponds. And now, nanoponds would have been a good name for the channel, too, but oh well. Hey, Bucket Pond family, one last thing. Uh, if you made it this far, I am very proud of you. But I have four of these large jars with ceiling locking lids. They're very nice. And I'm wondering, should we set up some ecosphere aquariums using the different pond samples? Uh, I could use one jar for each pond. They would all be very different. They all contain different uh, plants and animals. And uh, this would be a new video series on the channel using uh, our own pond samples to start new ecospheres. So please let me know in the comment section if that would interest you. Uh, each pond is different and they would all be entirely unique. These would be uh, completely sealed, permanently sealed, never open ecosphere aquariums. So please let me know if you would enjoy that. But yeah, guys, uh, this is Bucket Ponds. My name is Terry. I make weekly videos, and I try to upload around Saturday or Sunday. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I appreciate it. We're starting to grow a lot faster now, and I'm really happy. So thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.